Squarespace event pages don't have a lot of customization options. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you my four favorite codes for modifying an individual event page in Squarespace. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that this event data here, where it has the title and the time and all that stuff, we're going to make sure that stays at the top of the page while we scroll through the rest of the event content. The next code we're going to use is going to add a time zone to that event time, which has been really important for a lot of my clients. We're also going to change these add to calendar links into buttons, and we're going to hide the previous event and next event pagination on the bottom, which some of my clients have requested, and I think it's a pretty cool code to know how to use. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and all of these codes are available for free on my blog at insidethesquare.co, but in this video, I'm going to share my screen with you so I can teach you exactly how to add these codes to Squarespace and how to customize them to make them uniquely yours. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and let's hop into this individual event page so we can take a look at the four creative codes we'll be adding. On the left-hand side of the screen here, you'll see the event data. This has the title, the date, the add to calendar links, and if you have a location enabled for this event, it'll be displayed here as well. The very first code we're going to add to Squarespace will make that event sticky so it stays at the top of the page even when I scroll down through the event content. Let's go ahead and add that code to Squarespace. On the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to select Pages, then Custom Code, then Custom CSS. If your menu doesn't look like mine, press the forward slash key on your keyboard and search for CSS so you can navigate there directly. I'll go ahead and paste our code right here, and when we scroll down the page, you'll notice that event information is now sticky to the top of the screen, so I can see more content on the right and I still have access to the title, date, time, and add to calendar buttons, and also location if you have that enabled. All right, next, let's go ahead and add a time zone to the event so it's very clear exactly when this is happening. After pasting this code in our CSS, notice that the text PST for my time zone was added right there after the time for my event data. Now this can be changed to anything you want it to be. Maybe you're on BST or GMT, Update these letters in between the quotation marks to anything you want it to be. The next code that I like to add is going to turn these calendar links into clickable buttons. We'll go ahead and paste this code here in our custom CSS. And instantly, we're going to see a button shape. Now, this code needs a little bit of explanation, so let me walk you through it. This first part of the code removes the symbol that's between both of those links. If I remove this code, watch what happens. We're now going to see a little dot visible on the screen. And when I turn these into buttons, I think it looks a little weird to leave it there. So I have this code to remove that dot between the links. This next code is what creates this button look. I've added a background color, some padding, and a border. So we have a border around the button. The code after that creates a hover effect, changing the background color to pink on a hover. Buttons are very customizable, and there are all kinds of cool codes that you can add to change the style of these buttons. I'll include some resource links underneath this video in case you want to learn more. Now we have one more code for this tutorial, and that is to hide event pagination. I've worked on many client websites where the events aren't necessarily related to each other, and they like to remove the pagination for the next scheduled event. If that sounds good to you, this is the code you need. We're going to add this in a new line. And instantly, you'll see the pagination has disappeared. Now, this part of the code right here is what makes sure that information only disappears on an events page. Any other pagination, like for a blog post, will still be visible on your site. This code only affects event pagination. So let's recap this real quick, my friend, because we just added a lot of code. This first part of the code is what creates the sticky event information only on desktop and tablet size screens. When I scroll down the page, that event information will stay there on the top left-hand side of the screen. This second code adds a time zone to the event. Change the text between these quotation marks to change what's displayed. It'll match the font and style of the time zone, so content is all we really need to add here. The third code that we added changes these calendar links into buttons. We remove the little icon that shows up between them. Then we added a background, some padding, and a border to create this button look. And we added a hover effect that makes the background pink on a hover. Change any parts of this code to customize it, especially the colors, so it suits the style of your own unique website. I'll include some additional resources underneath this video if you want to learn more about customizing buttons. 
And then last but not least, we hit the event pagination, which shows up at the very bottom of the screen. This code only applies to event pages, so this won't mess with pagination on a blog post or any other collection page type in your Squarespace website. After you've made all the changes you'd like to see, select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. Underneath this video, you'll find a link to my original blog post where you can copy the codes that we just used and add them to your own Squarespace website. Just make sure that you update the important parts of this code, like the colors, so that it matches your own unique website style. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about Squarespace, let me know in the comments. I'd love to help. Thank you so much for watching. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. To learn more about all the cool things that you can do with Squarespace, be sure to check out the related content linked below and visit InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.